we essentially had to evict this guy four times or had to go out to the property four times to get him out of his unit. I was in the east side suburb and uh, they do things a little bit differently than the city of Cleveland proper does. In Cleveland, um, the bailiffs have you know their guns in hand when they enter a unit. So the bailiff's there, my guy, my tech's there with the keys, uh, the moving company's there because in this suburb you have to actually store their belongings, you can't put them on the tree lawn like you may have seen in a Cleveland eviction. Um, so everyone's there. The movers get paid whether they move a lamp or they move out of the entire unit. They get There's a minimum, so the, t the clock is ticking. Everyone's trying to get it done as quickly as possible. My guy's there, he, t he calls me when the bailiff gets there, they go up, they use the keys to try and get in the unit, lock and locks. Go to open the door, door doesn't open. So they're like, what the fuck? So he calls me, I'm like, well, you know, pop the hinges. You know, whatever you gotta do, get in there. I'm like, is the bailiff banging on the door? You can hear the guy banging on the door, no one's answering. So they start, he goes out to the, the truck to get some tools to pop the hinges. Starts popping the hinges and all of a sudden the voice from inside is like, hey, what are you doing? So the bailiff's like, you know, hey, sir, you gotta come out, you're getting evicted, blah, blah, blah. Guy's like, no. Guy refuses to come out. So the bailiff goes to my tech, all right, I have to leave and go to the next eviction. My tech's like, hey man, uh, I thought you were here to get this guy out of the unit. That's the whole point of an eviction. If the guy wanted to leave on his own, we wouldn't be evicting him. Bailiff's like, nope, I can't. He doesn't want to come out. I can't force entry to the unit. Um, you're going to have to call your lawyer. You can't really do anything. Um, the bailiff wants to leave. He can leave. So the movers leave. Bailiff leaves. I send my guy away. I'm calling my lawyer. She calls the judge's clerk. She calls me back. She's like, get everyone back out there right now. The bailiff's coming. So I am call up the mover. I call up my guy. I'm like, hey, everybody, turn around and come back to the unit. So they go back again. Second time we've been there, right? Same story. The guy won't come out. So I'm like, why, why the hell did we bring everybody back here? The result's the same. My lawyer's like, all right, you got to call the police and tell them there's somebody trespassing in the unit. I tried to get there as quickly as possible, but I'm on the other side of town. I start driving that way. They, they're, you know... They're waiting for me to get there for some reason. I get there. There's four police cars there. Bailiffs there. Movers are there. We got vehicles up and down the street. You know, everyone's there for this. The neighbors are coming down on their porches. They see the police. You know, everyone's nosy. Um, people are yelling and screaming and stuff. Cops go up there. Same story. Guy doesn't want to come out. So they are like, hey, man, what do you want us to do? I'm like, I got evict the guy. That's why everyone's here. They're like, all right, we need a radio that, you know, we can kick the door down or whatever, force entry. Their uh, supervisor won't let them do it. They're like, oh, you're going to have to come back. We don't have anybody available to come help you right now. All right, great. I have to fill out a statement, tell them the guy's trespassing. It's getting late in the day. Everyone goes home. Get a call like two days later from the police officer who was there. He's like, hey, man, you got to come down to the station, fill out another statement. We got to go take it to a judge, get a warrant, and then we'll be able to get the guy out. Go all the way back to the police station, fill out all the paperwork they want, make another statement, sign everything, drive back to my office. The police officer calls me, hey, we got a tactical team available. We'd like you to come back with the keys and let us in. I'm like, great, I gotta turn around. It's gonna be like an hour. He's like, all right, that's oh, fine, we'll wait for you. I go back to the east side where the suburb's at. There's like six or eight police cars there. There's all kinds of guys in like body armor. They have uh, rifles out, all kinds of stuff. They're ready to go get there with the keys. We stand behind the trucks. Um, they go up to the unit, unlock the door. Sure as shit, the guy's not there. All this for nothing, right? A couple officers wait there with me. Me and my guy change the locks, secure the property, think everything's great. Come back a couple days later, the locks are changed again. The tenant had broken back in and changed the locks. Like, what the fuck? So, so now, this is the fourth time we've been out there. Call the police. I'm like, dude, this guy's back in the unit. They're like, well, you know, we don't have a tactical team right now. Um, it's Friday. Let's just give him the weekend. You know, he had already moved some stuff out, of, so maybe he'll move the rest of it out this weekend. Stay away from the property. Call us Monday or Tuesday if he's not out. So we go back out there Tuesday, and the guy, thankfully, had moved out. We changed the lock, secured the property. So that's it's five trips, not four. It's five trips to get one guy out of a property. So everything's always eventful. Nothing's normal in property management. Holton Wise handles it.
God knows I've been through this before. Action. Action. All these fucking videos. <laughs> ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods and you'll see why the Cleveland bailiffs show up armed and maybe the suburban bailiffs don't. Kapow!